Good morning, everybody. We welcome you this morning to our DCIKZ ICC um, devotions. And uh, this morning, we want to look into scriptures um, and see how we are going to weather our storms uh, through the Word of God and what the Word of God has for us. My name is David Kibera. I am one of the pastors at DCIKZ. And uh, I'm glad this morning that the Lord has given us a new day. Um, and he, he has made this day for us. Scripture says we need to rejoice and be glad in this day. Before we get into uh, just hearing a, a short word, I would want us to pray as um, we get into today's word of encouragement and the word that is going to help us to weather the storms. Um, even as we continue to uh, walk in this walk of faith. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you this morning. We thank you that you have given us yet a new day. We want to rejoice and be glad in this day. We ask that in the name of Jesus, that as we start off our Father, and as we get into the business of the day, that we'll have a word that we can hold on to as we go into the busyness of the day. We pray that your word will resonate with us, that you speak into our situations, and that above everything else, our Father, all that we embark to do, we will do it for your praise and for your glory. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we, we hear what uh, the word has for us, there is a song I love to sing. You will allow me to just sing this song and if you know it just sing along with me and then we will get into hearing God's word Father God in heaven precious Lamb of God we humbly bow before you and cry holy holy all of heaven singing song of the redeemed giving glory to the lamb by your blood you have saved us by your blood you have freed us by your blood he can enter into your holy place by your love you forgave us by your power you have raised us by your blood precious blood of the lamb father god in heaven precious lamb of god we humbly bow before you and cry holy holy all of heaven singing the song of the redeemed giving glory to the lamb for by your blood you have saved us by your blood you have freed us by your blood we can enter into your holy place by your love you forgave us by your power you have raised us by your blood precious blood of the lamb and by your blood you have saved us by your blood you have freed us by your blood we can enter 
into your holy place by your love you forgave us by your power you have raised us by your blood precious lamb of god hallelujah it's by the blood that we enter it's by the precious blood of the lamb of god that we are found this day we have been forgiven we have been raised lifted by the precious blood of the lamb of god having said that I want us to get into a reading for today the verse that we're going to share is coming from the book of first peter the book of first peter chapter number one and i'm going to read uh, just nine verses and then we'll get um, a few nuggets from this portion of scripture so our text is coming from the book of first peter uh, first peter chapter number one and verse number one to nine and this is what scripture says peter an apostle of jesus christ says to god's elect exiles scattered throughout the province or provinces of pontus galatia cappadocia asia and bithynia verse 2 says who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of god the father through the sanctifying work of the spirit to be obedient to jesus christ and sprinkled with his blood it says grace and peace be yours in abundance and verse number three says praise be to the god the father of our lord jesus christ in his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope the resurrection through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead verse number four says and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil or fade this inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by god's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time you know this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials verse number seven says these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith which is of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may result in praise glory and honor when jesus christ is revealed verse number nine says though you have not seen him you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him and are filled with an in an inexpressible inexpressible and glorious joy inexpressible and glorious joy for you are receiving the end result of your faith the salvation of your souls now allow me to just give a, um, a brief uh, uh, background of, of the book of first peter now the book of first peter is believed to have been written by the apostle peter uh, one of the greatest apostles uh, of the early church and peter writes to the christians of the people who have believed and this is this is many years after jesus or quite a number of years after jesus has uh, left we all know that peter becomes the lead uh, apostle who leads the church and peter is almost getting to the end of his life and he writes to encourage the believers now one of the things that we need to know is that peter and if you read uh, from scriptures he is known as the apostle of hope now peter wrote a lot of course being a jew himself he wrote a lot encouraging the church and the church then the believers that you will find peter targeting were the jews who had been converted and who had become part of the church and so he writes to them giving them hope in the situation that they find themselves in now a little uh, background again on this um on the situation that was happening politically there is an emperor at this time and his name was emperor caesar um, nero and caesar nero becomes the, the the emperor in rome at this time and he comes into the scene and there are a lot of things that he wants to do he wants to leave a mark that emperor nero passed this place and he wants to leave a mark in rome and one of the things that emperor nero didn't like so much 
was the believers who had come into the faith and had converted to Christianity. He didn't like, he didn't have good words. He didn't, he wasn't so kind for uh, the believers um, in Rome uh, during this time. And, and so he wants to, in a way, you know, clear the, 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 the believers, the Christians, if you do want. There are a lot of things that are happening in Rome. And one of the things that we are told is that on um, July, I think July 17th or thereabout, uh, AD 64, that Rome was burnt down. And Rome was burnt down because Emperor Nero himself wanted to burn down Rome and build it afresh so that he would have an imprint of his, um, his work in Rome, uh, so to speak. And so he gets into trouble with the, the authorities and the people who are blamed because of the fire that was set up in Rome, Emperor Nero runs to the Christians and says, it must have been these people who came to burn the place. Because, you know, it was known that Christians were not good people. It was known that Christians had become people who, uh, for lack of a better word, um, were cannibals. Cannibals in the sense because they, they would share the Lord's table. They would say they were sharing the body of Christ and they were drinking of the cup and the cup represented the blood of Jesus. And so, for the people who didn't understand what this was, it was a nice way of blaming the Christians and saying it must have been these people who set this place on fire. Now, having known the kind of environment that they are in, Peter looks into the days coming and looks into the lives of believers and tells them hard days are coming, tough days are coming. And I dare say even today that looking at the way things are happening, we, we would like the Christians in the day of Peter when he's writing, we would look into the days coming and you are allowed to look at every other sector, every other sphere of our lives and things are becoming harder and tougher. They're becoming more challenging even to the people of faith. And so we could clearly say that Peter is truly addressing the believers in the areas that he has mentioned above. And in those areas, like uh, if you'd want, the present day areas of around Turkey and uh, the, the, the place that is just um, bordering the west, the, the, between the east and the west. And he, he tells them that they need to prepare because harder times are coming. Now, what Peter tells the Christians then is so relevant to us today. We need as Christians to be ready for tougher and harder times. We're just coming through a pandemic. We didn't know that we were going to get here. Now, in the pandemic, many of us have lost our faith. Many of us have compromised. Many of us have gone into other things, looking for help here and there, trying to ask, and even our faith being challenged, asking ourselves, where is God in all this? Where was God when we were going all through, uh, through all these uh, challenges that came with the pandemic? And there have been many. If we, if we start to narrate them, or enumerate them, the challenges that came with the pandemic are many. And Peter writes to God's people in a time that is promising to be a challenging time. And so we could rightly say, as he writes to the uh, people and he tells them, he calls them God's elect. These are people who are exiles. These are people who are scattered all over the, uh, the, the provinces that he has mentioned. And he tells them very, very powerful things. And one of the things that he tells them is that the Godhead, and he mentions uh, the Godhead in, in, in being the person or the one who is together with the Christians in what they are going through. This is in verse number two. Who have been chosen, the elect in the, the areas that he has mentioned, says they have been chosen according to the foreknowledge. And he says they were foreknown or God foreknew them. He says God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with His blood. Now, for me, that is so powerful. The Godhead is at work in bringing hope and encouraging the people who are going through or who are just about to get into deeper and harder times. He says, God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, God the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ, who is God the Son, and sprinkled with his blood. He says, that is the God who foreknew them. Meaning, 
God knew about this time. God knew about the challenges they were going to go through. God knew about the space that they are in long before they came into the same. And I want to encourage us today. I don't know what you're going through. The truth is, God foreknew you. As a Christian, I have the confidence to say, God foreknew, foreknew me. He knew I was going to be here long before I came. And Jeremiah tells us that, you know, God appointed him to be a prophet to the nations long before he was conceived in his mother's womb. And if it is the same God that we worship, then he must have known about me. He, have, he must have known about you, who today is going through tough times. And I dare to say, we could be getting into tougher times than uh, we could think. And so God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit knew that you were going to be here. He knew that you were going to come into this space. And so he says, we need uh, to hold on to this God. Peter reminds the believers who are going through this time of distress and who are going into persecution. We've just talked about the emperor who was in power then. That they are the elect, they are the chosen ones. They are chosen because God foreknew them long before they came into this space. And the same is true. That's what we said. God has chosen you who has come to believe. God has chosen me who has come to believe. And he knows what's ahead. Now, if that is not you know, confidence enough for you to face the day, to face the challenges that are coming your way, I don't know who else would give you uh, the comfort of going into the day. If God the Father knows you, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, then the rest do not, do not matter. And so by implication, we are saying, this scripture makes a lot of sense to us today as believers. Because like the believers then, Peter is addressing us. He says, you have believed by faith, and he says, in whom you have not seen. Verse 8 of the portion of scripture that we read. It says, you have believed without seeing. You have believed without having met Jesus. So by faith, you have believed. And because of that, well, of that then, this scripture means a lot to us as believers. You have loved the one you have not seen. You have not yet seen him, but have believed. And because of this, this should give you unspeakable joy. The fact that we know we believed in God and we have believed without uh, seeing, we have believed, we haven't met Jesus. We, we are not that, like the people then. We're not like Peter who met Jesus in person. You know, Jesus and Peter talked eye to eye. And so Peter is writing to us and says, you guys, you need to be rejoicing. He says, you need to have a lot of joy. And he says, the reason is, you have believed in him, in him whom you have not seen. We have not uh, walked with him like he did, but he says you're, 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 you're blessed. And so that should give you a lot of joy. And so as a Christian today, as you go into whatever business you're going into today, get to understand that as you go through this, as you go into what God has given you to do, that there should be, there should be joy coming out of us because we have known one who has made the difference in the world. Though we never saw him, we have believed him. Though we never, we never walked with him, we have faith in him and we have come into a faith through Jesus Christ. Scripture says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9 that it's by grace through faith that we have been saved. Say we have been saved by grace through faith. And so none of us should boast. Um, I, I don't know whether Peter would have said the same words. Maybe Peter would have added, yes, it is by grace through faith, but I also saw the Savior. You cannot say that. But Peter says it because he lived with Jesus. Now, for us, we are at a much, much better place because it is indeed by grace, through faith, that we have been saved. And because of this then, brothers and sisters, Christians, people who are listening to me today, you have a living hope. Your hope is alive through the resurrection of Jesus Christ because you believed in whom you had not seen and because of that then you have been born into the family of God you have been born into God's family by grace through faith and so for you you have acquired there is a living hope that is in store for you in verse number four of the scripture the portion of all the text that we read it says that hope that you have has been laid up in heaven 
it is stored someplace. It is your inheritance, brother and sister. It is in your inheritance. You might be going through life and you're saying, I have no inheritance at all at all. I am here to tell you this morning that there is a much, much better inheritance for you. It is laid up, stored up in heaven for you because you have come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because you have been born into God's uh, kingdom or into God's family by grace through faith. And it says that that hope that you have is not just like any other hope. It is a hope that is incorruptible. Your hope, the hope that you have laid up in store for you, it is incorruptible. It is undefiled, verse number four tells us, and that it does not fade. It is a hope that will not fade away. Meaning, this hope that we have, we need to keep beaming the same hope because it does not fade. There is no one time our, our hope will have no energy. Our hope will have no, um, you know, the light of our hope will not be dimmed because it is stored up in a place that the scripture would say rust and moth and thieves do not get to. In verse number 6 and 7, the encouragement that we have, and that's the same encouragement that we, uh, I want to speak to us today. We therefore need to stand against all trials. We need to stand strong against all trials because it is not we don't do it in our power. Verse number five says, we need to rejoice when these trials come because the power to keep us and to preserve us is not our own. It is God's power. It is a power that is from God. If it were our own power, maybe we would be thinking, well, how am I going to make it? How am I going to get through this? But the truth is, we will stand firm, we will stand against all the trials and the temptations all the persecutions may be, could be, that will be coming. You and I will be able to withstand. You and I, and, and by withstanding, we are saying that you are going to get into these trying moments as a Christian. We will be with our faith in the trials. We will come out of the trials and temptations and persecutions in our faith, professing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because the keeping... The, the sustaining, the power that is carrying us through is not our own. Our own power will fail. Our own power is limited. But verse number five tells us that it is God's power that will see us through. So these temptations will come. Among others, they will come. And one of the things, when we go through trials and temptations and trying moments, Scripture says that this will, will serve to purify your faith and my faith that is more precious than gold and that faith that perishes not so whether we are tried through the father the fire or whether we are tried through the many things that we will be going through we should get to a place where we will say this has come this has come not to take me out it has come to make me a better christian and so when we get out of it when we are on the other side and we're saying we came through the pandemic, we came through this persecution, we came through this trial, we should look back and say, I went through it. And one of the things that happened through this trial is that God was praised, glory went back to the Lord. And that should happen now and until the day Christ appears. And so brothers and sisters, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever persecution you're going through. And you could be saying, ah, oh, preacher man, you do not understand. In my place of work, I'm being persecuted. Being persecuted because of being a Christian. They persecuted the early church. And so why do you think you are exceptional? They were persecuted, they never gave up. They were persecuted, they never lost their faith. In fact, scripture tells us that Peter, when Peter is writing at this time, uh, history would say that after he is done with this writing, and he's, 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 he's taken in the way he died. He was crucified upside down. His cross was not like the cross of Jesus. His cross was upside down, an inverted cross. Why? Because they wanted to demean the faith. And Peter didn't deny Christ. He might have denied Christ there before, but this time, a man full of faith, a man who's been through the grace and a man who has come through knowing that 
the power that sustains him, the power that keeps him, the power that causes him to keep going is not his own power. He never, he never denied Christ. And so he is crucified facing the other side. And during this time, we find that the Christians of, of, of the early church, and one of them could be Paul. Paul also comes to a place where he has fought for the faith, he has defended the faith, and gets to a place where he is put in. And while he's in prison, he writes to encourage the believers then and today. And because this is of faith, and this letter is written to the church, it is relevant to you today, it is relevant to me today. I can only purpose that whatever comes, let it come. Because when it comes, it is not my power that I'll uh, depend on. I'll depend on the power that is of God. I'll depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. I'll depend on the power that comes from the work that Christ Jesus did on the cross. And so in my life, as I go into looking into this blessed hope, this glorious hope that you and I need to keep talking about, regardless of what is happening, we need to know that this is hope that is God-given, stored up in heaven, in a place that cannot be corrupted, it cannot fade away, it cannot perish, it cannot be stolen, because it is in the abode of God. And that should give you the impetus. That should give you the strength to get into uh, today and in the days to come, in the midst of many, many things that are happening. Allow me to make a prayer for all of us. And you're saying you're here, or you're listening to this um, broadcast this morning. You're saying, yes, that is my story. I'm just about to give up on this faith. I'm just about to give, us because, to give up because a lot is happening in my life. You do not understand. I need not understand because I am I'm limited as a human being. But God understands. And in that situation, he's coming through for you. In that situation, he's going to carry you through. It could be through a sickness and disease that has ravaged your body and your systems. And you're saying, I'm just about to give up. I'm here to encourage you. Hold on to the faith. Go into it uh, with the faith that you have pro professed in Jesus Christ. And whether we die or not, we are going to hold on to that faith. Because someday, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we know that we are going to resurrect. And because of that, then we can have hope beyond this life. Hope beyond the grave. Hope beyond this life that is so challenging. And so allow me to pray with us. And then we will be done. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. We listen to this letter to the Christians that the Apostle Peter writes. And he writes a letter of hope. A letter to encourage the believers who are going through trying moments, tough times, and a time of persecution. We pray that in the name of Jesus. Because those that believed, those that received this letter, those that these words were meant to, the letter came across and it encouraged somebody. Today we read this letter. It makes a lot of sense to us living today. And we want to hold on to that same Christ, that same hope that is in Christ Jesus, that same hope that the Godhead was, was involved in, knowing that it is God who foreknew us long before we came into this scene. We want to hold on the same encouragement that P Peter gives to the believers then. We are set in the name of Jesus. That if there be in one of us, and there could be some that are saying, I'm just about to give up on this thing. I'm just about to give up faith because of the many things that I have gone through. Challenges, luck, and, and sickness, and disease. You've been shunned and betrayed by people. I pray that you will find in this hope that is imperishable, in this hope that cannot fade away, in this hope that cannot be taken, that there will there will be life injected into your system, into your body, into your, into your spirit. And today becomes a day that you see God at work in your life. I want to thank you for each one of us that has received, that has heard, that has listened to this devotion. We pray that as we go into the day, that hope shall be born again. That hope shall spring forth in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Keep watching. Keep listening to us. 
coming from DCIKZ. May the Lord bless you and go before you in a big way, giving you success in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.